Hey, what's up everybody? It's Steph from Steph Lee Films. Last week, we released two videos unboxing and introducing the A10 Mini Pro and doing a first run on the A10 Mini Pro console, giving you an insight of the buttons and what they can do to give you better production quality for your broadcast and live streaming purposes. Before I continue, I would like to give a shout out to subscribers who have commented and given me their feedback on their thoughts on the A10 Mini Pro, as well as asking questions regarding certain functionalities and usage. I've tried to reply to your questions as soon as I could, so I hope my answers are useful and timely. Have you ever seen newscasters, football pundits or weather report girls standing in front of a huge green screen and they seem to be overlaid onto some computer graphics to show what they are presenting? One big function that I have not covered in the last two videos is the key or Kia function on the A10 Mini Pro. So today I will give you a complete tour of what this amazing function can do. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Because today we are going to focus on what the key function can do, I have a very minimal setup. Just two cameras connected to port 1 and 2. Port 4 is connected to my laptop's HDMI and the Ethernet port is connected to my laptop via a USB Ethernet adapter so I can have access to the ATEM software control as you can see from my screen here. This is just my personal preference and I've always liked to connect port 1 to my main camera and leave port 4 to my laptop. One quick tip here, it is good practice to keep your setup consistent because whenever you go on site, you automatically know which ports to connect to based on your existing workflow. You save a lot of time trying to figure out which cameras to connect to which ports and if something crops up, you will know which camera or port is having the problem. So before we continue, let us switch this Aurora to something you are more familiar with, green screen. Once we are in ATEM software control, click on the palettes and upstream key 1 and chroma. We will leave the fuel source here to camera 1 which is this main camera facing me. As for the chroma sample, click on it to activate this option. Then move this box to sample the color of your backdrop. In this case, we are usually talking about a green screen. This can be seen in the preview part of the multi view. You can increase the size of the box here using the scroller. I have done a makeshift green screen behind me. As you can see, it is not the most perfect green screen as there are shadows on the folds here. But this floor is actually intended. So I can show you later what the amazing A10 Mini Pro can do to digitally clean up these floors. Okay, very simple explanation for the fuel source and the chroma sample is. Just imagine you have printed something out and you have cut out the outline with a pair of scissors. Now that we have these two cut out parts, you will want to keep the picture and discard the unwanted part. So fuel source is basically what you want to keep and chroma sample is what you want to discard. So now that we have this cut out ready, we switch the view to the display graphic that you want as your background. So now we'll switch the view to port 2 which is just showing the view from camera 2. So what we're going to do now is to paste the cutout from what we just did onto this screen by pressing the key button on your console or the on air button on the software control and I just magically appear right here. Remember what I mentioned earlier that this makeshift green screen is not perfect. So you can see there are actually folds and shadows of my green cloth around me. But now I'm going to teach you how to digitally remove these flaws. Under key adjustments, foreground is set to 0% as default. If you push it to 100%, it basically means erasing your background which is camera 2 and desaturating it, making your foreground which is my cutout here, the only view, like this, which is not what we want. So we're going to reduce back to 0% and play with the background. Now the background option here is what you are looking at. You increase the percentage by dragging the sliders rightwards and you slowly see the flaws disappearing. You can see on this side, can you see that? Yep. Then use the key edge slider to clean out the edges between the key and the background. I can't really tell you what the percentage number to key in for both options as every setup is different. So you have to make your own judgement to clean up the key as cleanly as you can. You can play around with the chroma correction and colour adjustments here to find something that looks pleasing and perfect to your eyes. Now I will talk about masking. The mask option here allows you to crop the key either from the top, bottom, left or right. So I'll just do a simple left mask here just to show you an example. The default is set to minus 16. So I'll just change it to minus 8 and you can see here, as you can see here, the mask is being cropped out and the left is being cut off. 
So we will change this back to minus 16. The flying key is a very interesting and fun option to play with. You can adjust the position and size of the key using the settings here. So let's say you want to move the key to the bottom right. So we change the X position to 10 and Y position to minus 5. Then we change X size to 0 0.5. Take note that this interlocking clip icon here means you maintain the X and Y ratio when you resize your key. Under keyframe, you can actually program this setting to set A or set B. So let's say we save this to set A. Then let's try shifting the position to 5. Then we save it as set B. So right now we have run to A, run to B and full. So when you click on full, it becomes full size. And when you run to A, it goes to the bottom right, run to B, goes to the top right like this. The run to infinite option just makes your key disappear according to the arrow styles here. Example like this, a disappear to the extreme left. And it appears here, or you can disappear to the bottom right. So now we have pretty much learned how to use this chroma key using the background from another camera's view. I'm going to show you how you also can use stills from your media player as the background. Go to media and put in your stills into the 20 slots available here. Then go back to switcher and select MP1, which means media player 1 here. Immediately, you can see that the background has changed to the images in your media. Under media player here, you can select the images as you want it by changing the stills here, which means that I can travel to anywhere I want to just by switching the different backgrounds. Another option you have is to switch the view to port 4, which is showing the screen from your laptop. Here you can also play images, videos or anything from your laptop and the background will switch accordingly. However, my suggestion is that if you plan to use the laptop option, connect another laptop to port 4 so that you don't mess up your main software control panel. But if you only have still images, use the MP1 function because then you only have one laptop to handle and that will not be so messy. There you have it. I hope this video has given you a good idea of what the chroma key function on the A10 Mini Pro can do and the endless possibilities that come with it. As I've said this before and I will say this again, the A10 Mini Pro is definitely a piece of equipment that you will want to own if you're planning to get into live streaming or simply if you just want to improve and increase your productivity level and upgrade your existing setup for broadcast. Before I end this video, I'd like to say that it really means a lot to me if you found the information useful and you can give this video a like. So it encourages me to continue making such videos to help you in your photography or videography journey. And of course, don't forget to subscribe as well. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.